at this time. So we rushed to the scene among this frantic 911 call. And I have it here for you. Let, let me start with that. So it, we can take away any of this about, oh, there's a disturbance, right? 23-54-35-2nd-July-7-2022. Now we have to call back twice, and we've compressed the dead air time. baby mama is fighting. Fighting. That's what our sergeant arrived to by herself. She is much smaller than Xavier Jordan. That's right. It's a full-blown fight. He's fighting and hitting. And when our deputy, our sergeant, Gaylord, arrived, he, Jordan, had his girlfriend by the hair. So he ran up there. She ran up there to try to break them up, to de-escalate it. He wouldn't turn her loose. We have independent witnesses that ran up with the sergeant because they saw her arrive by herself to back her up. We have their statements. He said it looked like a male was pulling a female inside. He took his rage outside. He smashed a phone and threw it into the woods. He grabbed the female by the hair and he hit her on the glass. She hit her face against the glass. That's when myself and another male guest stepped in to help, meaning the sergeant. He did not calm down. He threatened the sergeant with bodily harm. The male stated on, uh, on several occasions that he was going to swing on her. So at the end of the day, we had a single deputy, a sergeant, smaller than the suspect, try to de-escalate the event. It was so violent that other people at the hotel came to back up my deputy. We had the mother at the hotel screaming at the deputy to, to take him, to take him. And then he threatens that he's going to swing on the deputy. That's when she stepped back and tased him, which is protocol. She disengaged from him and tased him. She did exactly what she should have. She waited a lot longer and tried a lot more to de-escalate this out-of-control man who had already beat his 19-year-old pregnant girlfriend than I would have. That's the bottom line to it. So I don't know what Clayton Cowart's all about. Anytime he can get uh, an opportunity, he'll send out a press release. You know, he used to be our friend until we criminally charged Clayton Cowart with stalking because he put a GPS on his girlfriend's car. Oh, did I tell you that he's married? And then he sends out that press release that you get that's factually just not accurate. 
In fact, one of the videos that he sent you, if you listen closely, and we did, you can hear Jordan say, I'm going to swing on you. I'm going to swing on you. I don't know what this is about. We did not originally do a press release because it was a domestic violence. And it was between a 15-year-old and a 17-year-old. However, when she got in this bad situation, she called for help. That's when Haines City police officers who are on that frequency, as well as deputies, were rushing to her aid because she was in a violent situation that was only deteriorating despite her best efforts to the contrary to get it under control and de-escalate it. Things don't always de-escalate. So at the end of the day, one, one police officer from Haines City is running across the parking lot to her aid when our lieutenant's coming around the corner and bumps him, knocks him down. We sent him to the hospital. He was treated and released that night from the hospital. Thank goodness he wasn't injured badly, but we appreciate him running to help our, our sergeant who was in a really precarious situation. I applaud her for her restraint. I applaud her for waiting as long as she did before she tased him. But she doesn't have to wait for a five foot nine, 190 pound man to turn and knock her down before she acts. She was act, he was actively resisting from the moment she arrived and tried to break the fight up and wouldn't break up. He started actively resisting. He continued to actively resist to the point citizens came to help my, my sergeant. And then they complained. Well, let me tell you, the next time you act like that, we're going to tase you again and again. You're not going to resist when we tell you, turn your girlfriend loose, quit beating her, quit hitting her, quit holding her by the hair. That's not acceptable. It's not acceptable to hit anyone, especially a woman, especially a pregnant one with your child. What are you thinking, Xavier Jordan? And what are you thinking, Clayton Cowart, when you are are the cause of him all over the news now. We didn't do that. Clayton Cowart did. So this young man is facing a charge or several charges. Yes. As a result of the officer getting hurt. That's correct. Some people might say it really wasn't his fault. The officer is responsible for his own stop. Why is he being charged with those things? That is the people who say that clearly and unequivocally don't understand. When you create an event, you're responsible for the cascading events around it. And that's exactly what happened. You resisting, you not complying, you not de-escalating, and these folks got hurt is a direct nexus, a direct nexus to your conduct. It's kind of like if you have a firearm and you shoot somebody, your buddy standing there beside you involved in the robbery that didn't shoot anybody also gets charged with felony murder. Same concept. Xavier, can you clarify his age? And is the victim cooperating with the sheriff's department? The victim gave us a statement and also told us. She gave us a limited statement that he attacked her. We have that in writing. We're going to give you a copy of that. Now, now she seems to want to retract that. You don't get to do that. But go back and listen to the audio. Listen closely to where we're trying to calm him down and she's trying to put handcuffs on him and she's trying to restrain him. He's not having it. He's actively resisting. So at the end of the day, could this be a proactive measure on their part because you know there's more people still under criminal investigation about this case. It's not over yet. There could be others charged. So at the end of the day is this a try to be a preemptive attack to try to shield 
Well, it won't do any good. If we find there are other criminal charges, we're going to bring those to whoever, whoever violated the law. That's a guarantee. Someone watching that video might see it as he's kind of standing there. How is he resist like how would you think that he's resisting arrest there? And then also just to clarify, do you think the reason she deployed the taser was the threat itself, the threats he was making? The 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 reason she deployed the taser was a couple of things. One, the threat, I'm go I'm going to swing on you. I'm going to swing on you. The threat. She's trying to get handcuffs on him. She's giving him direct direction, direct direction of what to do, he's not doing it. He's having nothing to do with it. You don't get to do that. You don't have to get knotted up in a fight before you use a taser. And you know what? Write this down in your book. Fights ain't pretty. Arguments aren't pretty. But when you beat up your girlfriend and then actively resist the sergeant, and it frightens the people at the motel to the point that they come to aid the cops, you got a situation on your hands. And that's what we had here was a situation. And she took control of it. And we handcuffed him and we took him to jail. And after he was in the car, he invited another deputy to take the handcuffs off and fight him. And he was going to beat up the sergeant. He threatened her again. So we picked him up two more charges of threat of a public official. At the next press event we're about to do, they're, they're probably going to say that he suffers from developmental disorder or something and may have been suffering from a psychotic break, um, the 15-year-old. Uh, what do you say to that? Yeah, first and foremost, there, was, there wasn't a mention of that on the 911 call. There was not a mention of that when we got there, and it doesn't make any difference if there was. It doesn't give you any right to act like that, to resist, to fight. It doesn't give you a right for that. I don't know wh where all that gyration's coming from, you know? But when you don't, you've got to make up reasons for acting the fool like he did. He was totally out of control. Totally out of control. And we got him back in control, as was requested by the 911 caller as was requested by his mama when we got there. Take him away. That's his mama's words, not mine. Take him away. That's what his mama said. And now we get all this noise. Come on, man. What are you talking about? Sheriff, how old is the girlfriend? 19. Uh, there's a lot of he, he say, she say stuff going on. There is. Would your body cameras clear this up? No, this we had cameras that cleared it up. They were there. Is Jordan's mother, um, they, uh, have you ever get in touch with her and talk to her and speak, uh, uh, speak to Jordan's mother about we, this incident? We, we talked to Jordan's mother that, that night, I believe. She's the one that said when we got there, take him, take him away. She was there that night. And the investigation's ongoing. And, and we've got to determine, there may be others charged before this is over with. Because everyone who has criminal culpability will get them a piece of this. That's a guarantee. Sheriff, that short video doesn't show the totality of everything that occurred that night. I, Would you have liked to have had everything to be able to show that this is what truly happened? Do you know what? Unfortunately, we have developed a world here that somebody thinks everything needs to, to be recorded. Now, they clipped down that piece of that video, but that piece of that video that y'all supplied to us to look at had his words on it that he was going to swing on the sergeant. But we have the information through eyewitnesses, independent eyewitnesses, and a, and a very rep, reputable law enforcement officer, a sergeant who I'm very proud of, who charged into a very violent situation by herself to protect a victim of domestic violence. And for that, she gets trashed around here by Cowart and, and his friends? Are you kidding me? Our deputy responding to a 911 call 
by herself charges into a domestic violence situation where a pregnant woman is being hit and y'all got y'all y'all cover this and they got the nerve to say oh my gosh oh my gosh Xavier Xavier you need to learn to behave and act like a man and a father not like a nut there you go did any of your sheriffs have any idea that this guy might have some developmental challenges before they arrived? They had that information. Zero. Zero. And it doesn't make any difference whether you have developmental charge challenges or not. We have zero information to sustain that. Zero. But it doesn't make any difference anyway. You've got to get the situation under control. She tried de-escalation. It didn't work. And then she put the real de-escalator on him the taser, and things got better, and nobody was hurt. He didn't have to go to the hospital. She didn't have to go to the hospital. If the police officer who was running to our aid hadn't got, got knocked down by one of our patrol cars, he wouldn't have had to go into the hospital. So the thing was resolved without people having to go to the hospital. So, you know, please understand, if we messed up, we'll dress up, fess up, and fix up. We didn't do anything except about what we should have done. We should have run there and helped that 19-year-old pregnant girl who was getting battered around by her boyfriend and ostensibly the father of her child. And we ran there, a single deputy a female to protect that pregnant lady and some want to challenge that get over it okay no no just the Haines City police officer was treated and released that night okay. And he went back in the hospital a day or two later for some pain, and they found some herniated discs, but he's in good shape. He, he, he does not have any significant injuries. Was that something before or that happened with this situation? Don't know. Don't know if, the, if it was caused by that or if it aggravated pre-existing injury.